Hello everybody. Welcome to another watercolor tutorial. Um, we're going to be painting a moody forest today. I have no plans for how this is going to turn out uh, because I am lacking inspiration and usually you know when I paint one of these moody forest paintings with pine trees it kind of reawakens the painter in me so that's what we're gonna do today um <clears throat> we'll see where it takes us and I thought because with these paintings you know I can't really give formal instruction because I have no idea what it's gonna look like um so I thought I would do like a, a sketchbook Sunday where I just chat about random topics while we are painting this together so I've started with my piece of paper. I'm sorry, I can't fit it fully on the screen because it's a larger piece of paper than I usually use. Um, and I think I am just going to cover it with a wash first. And I've just mixed a little bit of black with green for my wash. Uh, so that's what I'm applying on here first. And I just, the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want there to be just a white background. Um, although you're welcome to do that too. Like, I don't have a plan today for this painting. But today is February 27th when I'm paint, uh, when I'm filming this. So you're not going to see this video until probably May. Sorry, no, April, April, because I have all my March tutorials pre-filmed and ready. So this one is probably not going to come out until April. Um, and today is one of those days where I kind of felt inspired to paint but I don't have a specific inspiration, which is why we are doing this forest painting. Um, so I've covered my piece of paper with this wash. It's still wet. Um, I have that same pigment that I used for the background, but obviously less water and more pigment on my paintbrush. And uh, gosh, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna make like the illusion of a, a very steep cliffside mountain or something coming down. I don't know. I don't know what this is gonna be. Luckily this is cotton paper, so you know, it, it gives us a lot of time and room for air. And I finally linked uh, the paper that I use in the description of this video, like the cotton paper that I use, because I switched to cotton paper a little little while ago, and some people were asking. So the link to the affiliate link is in the description if you want to check out what I'm using. Um, so yeah, it's today is a day I felt inspired to paint. But this is after spending four hours looking at YouTube shorts. I'm actually ashamed. I cannot believe I spent four hours on YouTube shorts. That is, that is pathetic. And nobody should waste their time like that. Um, and actually the thing that like got me out of that funk is I saw a watercolor tutorial on YouTube shorts and I'm like, I should really paint. I haven't painted in weeks. So today's the day I'm gonna paint. And that's where we are now. Anyway, I've extended this thing kind of down to the bottom, but I faded it out here because I really wanna give the illusion of mist. And what I'm gonna do differently in this painting. I haven't really done this in moody paintings before. I'm going to use the assistance of a uh, paper towel maybe, maybe later on. Um, and it'll, I'll try to dab some of the watercolor off. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where it takes us. Um, but yeah, I haven't been very motivated. And, uh, 
today, I was like, nope, today's the day. You feel physically good. And so, I'm like, I'm gonna paint one of these because you guys really like these moody, moody sort of landscapes. Um, I don't mind painting them. I haven't done one in a long time. And they allow for a lot of creative expression. Uh, I don't really know what to do next. <laughs> Oh gosh, okay, um, I'm going to switch to my size one by Windsor & Newton. I'm going to pick up some more black watercolor, so there's a little bit more intensity on my brush. And maybe we'll start some more detailed pine tree tops up here. Oh, I actually had a picture of a, um, I took a picture of the tops of some pine trees on our last trip to Europe and I screenshot or like I, I put it on my laptop screen and I was going to use it as inspiration. Uh, and now I don't really feel like getting my laptop. I really should though because the the pine trees looked really nice. I had rehearsed this whole thing that I was going to talk about in today's sketchbook Sunday and I totally forgot what it was going to be. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say that I regularly talk to myself and I regularly have convers- like I pretend that I'm a having a conversation with somebody and I will just talk to myself. Uh, okay, that's not turning out half half bad, but that's not, oh, I didn't want to get that um, precise with the pine trees so early on. Like that is, I wanted it to be misty and blurry and whatnot. So we're gonna try to blend that out I don't know I don't know guys you can see my background is already starting to dry we don't want that See, this is why this is not a formal instructional video. I don't have a formal step-by-step -step process here. In fact, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just ruined it. Like you can see all these brush strokes. Ah, oh, guys, I'm not having I'm not having a good day, which seems to be happening so often in my videos. I don't like this. We're starting over. Just blah, 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 blah. I think, okay, my tip for this is to apply a crap ton of water in the beginning. Just keep piling in on the layers so that your paper stays wet enough through the entire process to avoid parts of it drying and then you know you can't apply the details that you want because half of it is dry now I've got way too much water on there I used to paint such nice moody misty pine tree landscapes I don't know what happened I've lost my touch but I do want to stick with that uh, mountain thing I had going on earlier. With the mountain coming on this side, like sloping downwards. I did like that. So we're going to do that again. Something like that. And then maybe have 
some pine trees over here, just some detail like that. I don't know. Pick some of that off. Like I used to be able to create the mist in such a really cool, unique way. I don't know what happened. I've lost it. I've lost my touch. Um. So, yeah, like I said, it's the end of February. I don't know where most of you guys live. Actually, most of my viewers are from the United States. Um, but, I mean, that is such a variation in climate that, you know, I can't generalize. Y'all might be from Hawaii, for God's sakes. In which case, I very much envy you. I have been to Hawaii three or four times. It is a magical place. And I wish I was there. Because I am so done with winter. I am sick of it. I am, I am you know, at a point where I just... Let me tell you a story. Last week, no, you need some background here. I cycle to work. <clears throat> I live two kilometers from, from where I work. So it's not bad. I've been cycling to work for two years, not in the winter. I usually had the car in the winter because this, like, it freaking snows here all the time. And <sighs> what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, this winter, um, my husband had to be on site at work, so he takes the car every day. So I cycle to work, and you know, the two kilometers that it takes to get there is really not a big deal. I could walk there in 30 minutes if I didn't have a bike or I couldn't bike. So the distance is not the issue. The issue is that we live on a private lane that is not maintained by the township it is uh the responsibility of one of our lovely neighbors to plow it and maintain it but um you know because it's not salted which i totally agree with i think salting the roads though it's very necessary here in canada it is horrible for the vegetation um because it's not just salt that they pour on, on the streets. It's like this, these blue chemicals, God knows what's in there and what that does to <clears throat> nearby watersheds and stuff. But um, uh, the point is the snow gets compacted over time by, you know, the neighbors and everyone driving over it. And if you try to walk down this private lane you are going to fall because that compacted snow turns into ice and it's very dangerous and there's there's nothing you can do it's just how it is but i have to cycle to work so i have to walk my bike down this private lane to the main road before i can actually physically get on my bike and cycle to work and this winter, though it has been extremely mild in temperature in comparison to last year, for example, where we had off like weeks of below negative 20 degrees. It was ridiculously cold. Uh, Celsius, by the way. Um, this year, it's been very mild in temperature, but the amount of snow has been just ridiculous. Like, so much snow. And maybe I'm just hyper aware of it because I have to get to work on my freaking bike but I am so tired of it because like when you're on a bike and it's snowing all that snow gets stuck up in the entire drivetrain the chain the chain rings your derailleur gets rusted it just becomes a logistical nightmare to maintain that like I am going to have to replace my entire drivetrain after this winter is through because 
it is so rusted from the salt, from uh, just all of the moisture, um, and obviously the snow melts, and it rusts everything and corrodes everything, and the whole thing is made out of metal, so obviously. Um, oh, it's just been a nightmare to deal with, and then on top of that, if I don't like kill myself by falling off my bike, uh, it's been really hard. It's been very, very mentally taxing having to cycle to work every time I have a shift. And the other week, so this is the original story I wanted to get at, is the other week I, uh, it snowed again. And for some reason, it conveniently likes to snow exactly when I have to be getting to work. Every freaking time. I am so sick of it. I am complaining a lot here, but it's really getting to me. Um, so the plows, I, I don't think the snow was even in the forecast. Like, God was just like, I'm going to spite you today and <laughs> I'm going to make it snow. Uh, and so the snow plows weren't out yet. And so even the main road was unplowed but I was like oh like how bad could this really be so I get on my bike on the main road and at this point I had already fallen on the private road three times um I wasn't even on my bike I was walking my bike down the private road like I always do it was just so um slippery because the freshly fallen snow was covering the compacted snow which had already turned into ice so it was already very unsafe and so I had already fallen a few times enough that I bent the rim of my bike I didn't notice that until later but um I was already very distraught and frustrated because at this point I was already done with winter and then I get on the main road and I'm like, okay, it can't be that bad. And the main road to like the, the initial portion, the first part is this very um, steep hill uh, that I have to cycle all the way down. And going to work, that is a breeze, man. Like I just, I sail through that on a regular day when the road is actually maintained. But on this day, it hadn't been plowed yet. And I start going down very cautiously. I'm going slow because I'm not dumb. Like I realize that it is, there's snow on the ground and I gotta be careful. But I still inevitably fall. Um, and I, I kind of hurt myself quite a bit because I, was, I wasn't falling on gravel, I was falling on concrete. And uh, I fell like right on both of my knees. I don't even know how that happened. But I'm just on the ground in the middle of this road, crying, <laughs> like staring at the sky, just saying like, I hate winter. I can't take this anymore. I, I probably looked so pathetic. If somebody saw me and was looking at me at that moment, they would have been like, this is a crazy person. This is, like, we need to call the police. Um, but, yeah, that was that was definitely a low point for me. Because I was like, I can't take this anymore. I cannot stand winter. I cannot take this anymore. And, you know, it probably is just the fact that I have to cycle to work. That's probably why I feel this way this winter because I did not feel this way last like I loved winter last year and that's probably because I could take the car to work I didn't have to struggle and that's like not even including the details of um you know uh what am I trying to say the details of putting all your snow gear on your snow suit like all of that stuff um you don't have to worry about that if you're driving, but I had to do that every single day and take it off, put it back on. Uh, 
I realize I'm complaining right now and I know a lot of you, you guys are amazing and you're always so encouraging and you're like, oh, you have the right to feel the way that you do. But no, I complain a lot. I'm, I'm complaining a lot and I need to stop complaining so much. But I just wanted to share the story of how much I hate winter. <laughs> How much I am so ready. I, I hate winter this winter. I don't usually hate winter. This winter has just been particularly challenging due to um, a variety of circumstances in my personal life that are contributing to my uh, distaste for this season. So, um, uh, yes. But my point is, I don't even know what my point is. I need to be more positive. I need to stop dwelling so much. I think if my perspective changed and I was a little bit more of like, hey, the sun is shining today. Uh, you know, start listing all the things I'm grateful for. I would probably have an easier time. Like that would, and I'm confident that that actually does work. Um, and I even performed a little experiment once. I was feeling like this was, gosh, I don't know, six months ago. But I was feeling nauseous for whatever reason. Uh, maybe I was sick with something. I don't know. But um, instead of kind of having a long face and being like, oh, I feel so crappy, uh, like I usually do. <laughs> I was like, no, I am going to be positive and I'm going to think that I don't feel as nauseous as I actually do. And that actually worked like instantly, instantly. I felt so much better, less nauseous. Um, so I do think that focusing on the positive does work and does help alleviate the intensity of whatever you're experiencing. At least that was my experience in that moment. Uh, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but I need to be more positive in general. Not about this painting though, I'm not feeling this painting. I don't know what is going on. Again, my background is drying too quickly for me to be able to keep up with it. Ah, uh, so that was my spiel about the difficulties of winter and the luxuries of people that have multiple vehicles. Honestly, there, there should be no excuse. If you live two kilometers away from your work, come on, people. You do not need a car. I have no shame in saying that. Like, I know people, I live just outside a very small village. Like, it's everything in this village is walking distance if you live in the village. And I know of people that drive their vehicle to work when they live just around the corner. It would literally be a two-minute walk to work and they drive their car. And those people, in my opinion, in my opinion should feel ashamed of themselves. Like, come on, are you really that lazy that you cannot pick up your butt and walk to work? It's healthy for you. And you're also taking up parking spaces <laughs> unnecessarily. Okay, see, I'm complaining again. I'm back to complaining. Um, hmm. so the issue I'm experiencing with this painting right now is that it is, it is drying very, very quickly at this point. Uh, so it's kind of challenging to add the details that I want.
We're gonna have some silence for a little bit until I can think of what else to talk about. Do you guys actually find like this video in particular where I am kind of doing the most random things? I don't really have steps. Do you find these videos helpful? Do you actually follow along uh, with them? Because, you know, it's hard for me to give instructions when I don't really know what I'm doing myself, which is why I don't. I just kind of because if I give instructions and then I go back and like, oh, actually, no, don't do this. It's going to confuse a lot of people. So I think it's just easier if you learn from my my uh, process of what I'm doing. Like, for example, in the beginning when it, everything dried too quickly and I kind of just went over it again. I've done that a lot in tutorials, actually. Um where I kind of painted over something and started again. But let me know what you think. If you're like, no, please go back to more organized tutorials. Not that this is ever going to become a regular thing. Like I'm definitely more for the structured things where I'm like, okay, step one, do this. Step two, do this. But with the moody pine tree forest paintings, I don't have a process in mind. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can see this blob here, but this is exactly what happens when you try to apply water or a wash or whatever to a background that has already partially dried. This is what's going to happen. And it's really unfortunate that I did that because I think it really looks horrible, but we might be able to salvage that later on. Um, I'm not going to worry about it now because there's nothing I can do. So what I'm trying to do here, and it's not working, every time I water the paint down more it seems to not do anything, but I'm trying to water down the color that I'm using for this because I want it to be very light, kind of like it was here, so that it fades a little bit more with the background that I've already established. I don't want it to stick out quite as much. I want it to look misty. I bought another one of these brushes, my quadruple zero, because I've been using this one for acrylic paint lately, which is how I destroyed the first one. So I'm just preparing myself for needing to replace it in the near future. Oh, the other thing is, okay, I'm just going to add in a little plug here. I might do it, do a voiceover and add it at the beginning of this video too, but <clears throat> I don't know if uh, I've got new viewers here or whatnot, but please do check out my uh, pine tree class on Skillshare. That is uh, using the link in my description. It gives you like a free trial. Um, so you can try Skillshare and, and totally have my class for free. And if you don't like it, you can cancel with, you know, nothing. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? No risk to you, I guess. And obviously Skillshare has so many so like thousands if not more um classes on any topic you could possibly want to learn things about so um you don't have to just use it for watercolor painting but 
that is how you can access my class on pine tree painting methods. I go over eight different kinds there. I don't focus too much on how to paint pine trees in my, like actually directly in my tutorials anymore because I have so, so many tutorials in so many different social media platforms going over those things that it just becomes super redundant for me to do that. Um, <clears throat> so that's why I'm encouraging people to check out all these other platforms in which I have, I mean, even my YouTube channel here for free, like you can, there's so, so many, um, tutorials on pine trees that I have that you can check out and use. So yeah, go check. Go check out my Skillshare. The other thing I wanted to ask is what you guys think about YouTube shorts, those little short videos that you can watch that are, I don't know what the max time is, maybe a minute. Because not that I want to add another thing to my plate because I already feel like I can't keep up with what I have, but a girl's got to make money, you know, and if that is something that you enjoy that can also earn me some revenue, then that is something that I could concentrate on. My videos on here, and I mean, don't quote me on this, but I don't foresee myself ever stopping making regular tutorials on YouTube. Uh, but... I'm not really sure what I'm trying to say. I don't even know what I started saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I'm at a point where most of my painting here has dried. So I can't keep adding like foggy, misty portions. Um... I think I have to let this completely dry if I want to just start adding any more details because <clears throat> if I, like, it's half dry right now. It's, if I were to paint a pine tree and then I wanted to blur it out to create this misty effect on a second layer, this cauliflower thing that happened over here, this cloud, it would happen again. So I have to, I have to wait for this thing to completely dry if I want to do that again. I am gonna paint a couple here that I'm not going to blur out. Uh, just experimenting, I'm not really sure yet what I'm gonna do, but. <clears throat> There's some artists that paint pine trees that are so beautiful and realistic and they do it very effortlessly. And I'm very envious because I'm not always happy with mine. I think I've exhausted my techniques because I've been doing pine tree paintings for so long. <clears throat> I have, okay, so back to the whole tutorial thing and whatnot. I have a lot of ideas to try and generate more income because my goal is to eventually be able to quit my part-time job 
um, so that I can do this full time. And so I had a bunch of ideas that could generate me income, but would also benefit you guys. So, and actually you guys suggested like all of these ideas. So, um, thank you to that. But one thing that a lot of people were saying was they would pay for live, um, tutorials, like a live zoom tutorial, uh, where I take, for example, five to 10 students or five to 10 of you and we paint a picture together and I give you direct feedback during that process. So if that's something that you would be interested in, oh, and, and the price point, like you guys suggested, this is, this is what you guys said, that you would pay like 25 US dollars or something for a 30 minute to an hour class, right? And there'd be like five to 10 of you in this class. So let me know if that is something you'd be interested in, if that's a price point that you would be interested in, um, if it's like too little or you would even pay more. Like I have no idea. Uh, so any feedback would be awesome. The other thing that people suggested was the whole, uh, I'm not familiar with this at all, like obviously I know it exists, but I don't know what it entails, is the YouTube partnership thing. I don't know what that is. Um, so, like what does, is it kind of like Patreon where you just pay a monthly subscription fee and you I'm supposed to provide extra content like what I actually I shouldn't be asking you this I should <laughs> I should research this myself uh but I guess the reason I'm bringing bringing it up is because I want to know if that's something that you guys would be interested in because I don't want to waste my time on things that you don't care about if you know, if I put in time for this stuff and then I don't get a, 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 a good, it's not well received, I would have rather just spent that time on making more tutorials for you. So, you know what I mean? Okay, what I'm doing right now is very risky because I'm doing what I said that you shouldn't do, which is apply water on a half dry surface. This, I predict, is beginning is going to turn into like a, a cauliflower situation. Mark my words. So before it has a chance to do that, I'm going to paint a quick, very light um, pine tree here. And that way the left edge will fade into this pine tree and it will not be given a chance to cauliflower. So there we go. But this part might still cauliflower. And no, we're going to avoid that too. We're going to do a pine tree on top here. Like so. So there you go. There's some hacks to avoid, avoid cauliflowering. In this particular ah what the sorry <laughs> i hope i didn't scare anyone that was not intentional whatever it doesn't look that bad so i'm gonna leave it because sometimes fixing a mistake actually ends up making it even worse so we might be able to go over that later but that's kind of cool i was able to add a misty effect without destroying my painting it's always a bonus Yes, um, sorry, I am so all over the place, but please provide feedback on the YouTube membership thing and the, what do you call it, the, um, like, private uh, YouTube tutorials, like, live tutorials with a set group of people. I don't even know where I would do that or how I would do that, where I can provide 
verbal feedback while we are where I can see all of your screens at the same time. I mean, if you choose to do that, or even if that's something that is required. I don't know. I This was your suggestion, okay? <laughs> you gotta give me the feedback on it. Um, my watercolor workbooks, by the way, were really well received. Thank you guys so much for, you know, believing in me on Etsy. If you're wondering, the link is in my description, but I have three workbooks there. A, like, watercolor woodland one, a floral one, and, like, a winter-themed one. And... You guys seem to be really happy with them, and I'm so happy about that. They're so that was just, those workbooks were just a little side project that I wanted to take on and see what would come of it. It's just like a, you know, a step-by-step -step guide um, for some specific things. Uh, there's some, there's sample pages in the ad itself that you can kind of preview it before you see it so um yeah i just wanted to try that out and it was it was really well received you guys really really liked it and i'm really happy about that so thank you for trusting me with that and for your support. Very appreciated. You know what? I was going to apply another layer to this, but this has been going on for over an hour, so I'm going to call it a day. Peel this tape off, and we have a little moody forest. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comments. I always appreciate your feedback, and I will see you in the next tutorial.